Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a first impressions video. Today we're gonna to talk about the knife that everyone is talking about, the Mass Drop Perpetua. Okay, let me very quickly show you the packaging. There's one interesting point I wanna make here, but before I do, let me say this. This is going to be a first impressions, but it's gonna be just a little bit longer because I want to address some of the discussion that's been going on in relation to this knife, and there is a lot of it. Let me grab the package. This is how the knife comes, just like this. It's fairly plain, fairly straightforward. Uh, I'll just show you somewhere here. I have number 607, but I really wanna show you this. And, okay, so this is just saying it's Nitro V Steel and Grippy G10 and one of the most reliable locking mechanisms on the market. I love that phrase because this knife uses the axis lock. Now, what's interesting about that is Benchmade has the patent on the name, okay? They've trademarked the name axis lock. So you can use this locking mechanism, but you can't call it an axis lock. So their solution to that is to say, and one of the most reliable locking mechanisms on the market. I just found that a little bit humorous. Uh, not sure about you. Now, as I say, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer first impressions video because I do want to address some of the discussion around this knife. There have been some problems that people have talked about, uh, some quality control problems, and uh, that's something that I definitely want to speak to just a little bit. Mostly what I wanna say about that is TJ Schwartz and Sean from Millet Knives have been you know, on the go the last few days, few weeks, really addressing a lot of those issues that people have. And I do respect both of them and I'm sure that they're going to work hard to satisfy everyone who has an issue with this knife. And, and, and I'm not being paid by Mastrop to say that. My experience with both of those guys and what I know about them in the industry is that they're both stand-up guys and that you don't have a whole lot to worry about if you're dealing with them. And so uh, from that respect, I think things are gonna be fine. If you got one and it has issues, go ahead and comment down below. But more importantly, get in touch with Mastrop, get in touch with, um, TJ Schwartz or Millet Knives, and I know they will make you whole. If you want to see some of that discussion for yourself, uh, head on over to either Mass Drop, and you can look at the reviews section on this knife, or head over to Blade Forums. There is a thread about this where TJ Schwartz has been commenting and, and sort of discussing the knife as well. Okay, so let's get that out of the way first off. I will address some of these things as they come up. So let's start with the blade, and that's where one of the things has, that, one of the discussions comes along. So this is Nitro V Steel. Nitro V Steel is a very, very cool steel. It's essentially AEBL with extra nitrogen and vanadium. Wanted to say something else, but uh, vanadium is right. And that makes this a very tough, extremely corrosion resistant steel, which is really, really cool. And I'm excited to get to play with this and see how it holds up. Now, let me add that this steel has had a bit of a discussion around it. And the discussion has been, you know, that they initially were planning to harden this to 5759 Rockwell. All right, that caused a lot of people to back off. And in fact, a number of people canceled their order. Since that time though, and now that the knife has been released, and I don't know when the message officially came out, but uh, if you can go on Blade Forms, you can read it straight from the horse's mouth. They are hardening this to 6061 Rockwell, which is definitely a welcome change. All right, I'll be honest, you know, I because I knew this knife was gonna be a long wait, um, to help myself deal with that, I don't really check on it. When I order a knife that's like this, where it's gonna be six or eight months, I just order it and forget about it. When it comes in the mail, I'll be excited and a little bit surprised. And so that's kind of how this one went. Although I did track it. Once they said it actually shipped, the tracking on this, I will say, took forever. If you're watching from Canada, let me add that, you know, so I, I tracked this through the States. It crossed the border at, you know, it left from New Jersey, I think, crossed the border, on the 7th of September. I didn't get the knife till the 17th, okay? So it was really, really slow moving through customs. And even Canada Post seemed to have a bit of a hiccup. When I, when I tried to track this knife, it showed that they have no record of this tracking number at all and had no idea where it was or what was happening to it. So that was really, really weird until it just showed up in the mailbox. Like that was, I never got any indication that it was, that it was even close. All right, so getting back to the main point of our discussion, 
whoops, as I knock my scale over. We'll need the scale later because I will give you weight on this. So the Nitro V Steel is pretty cool. Let's talk a little bit about the blade shape and the finish. It's a stone wash finish, a really heavy stone wash finish. We've got sort of this modified draw point with a hollow grind. And I do like this blade shape and I like the way this is done. It gives me a nice thin edge and adds gives me a lot of toughness and a lot of durability. And that I think is gonna be the overall theme of this knife. I feel like this is a knife that's meant to be EDC'd, okay, it's a, it's a user knife. And with the idea of it being a user, they have tried to beef everything up a little bit. You know, the, the stop pin is pretty, hold on, I'm not showing it to you, sorry guys. The stop pin is pretty beefy. You know, we've got full stainless steel liners. The blade shape and the blade grind are definitely designed with toughness and durability in mind. Even the blade steel is designed with toughness in mind. And so I do like that aspect of this knife. If you are like me and you like those heavy duty, hard use folders, uh, but you don't want something massive, this is probably a pretty good option for you. Okay, moving on now to the axis lock. This is an axis lock. It's exactly like Benchmade makes axis locks. So if you like the Benchmade axis lock, you're gonna like this. If you don't, you're not. They haven't made any improvements. They haven't made any changes. It's just an axis lock, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, you know, if you're one of those guys, the, the, the Omega Springs are going to break and I just don't like access locks, then you're not going to like this, okay? Um, so, that's the first point I want to make about the action. Uh, it is on phosphor bronze washers and mine feels pretty smooth. In fact, yeah, it's not quite drop shut, but it's pretty darn good. Uh, I will offer one complaint that was around before these ever came and this is something a number of people have said. First out of the box, initial thing I thought was, Probably something you can see too, just by looking at this, and that is the thumb stud is too close to the frame, okay? Like many knives that have this configuration, you sort of have to bring your thumb up the handle and then it opens just fine, but you do have to remember that. And if you're not used to it, it can be a problem for you, okay? If you do it that way, it's perfect, all right? If you don't, it can be a little bit of a problem. I, you know, and my instinct on that is to say, I really, if I need coaching to figure out how to open the knife, that's probably not ideal, okay? It is what it is. It actually doesn't impede the function of the knife in any way if, if you apply pressure upward on the thumb stud, okay? If you, if you just push straight up, it works fine. It's only when you try to sort of squeeze your finger in here and push out that it doesn't work as well. But uh, that is something that is a bit of an issue, especially because, you know, in Epic Snuggle Bunny's video about this knife, he specifically said, hey, when they sent me this to look over it, I made some suggestions and they said they were gonna honor those. One of them was move the stud a little further from the handle. Uh, the other thing is for me, Okay, the blade to handle ratio on this knife is not awesome. And that's the same thing Austin mentioned in his uh, video with the initial, with the prototype version of this knife. I don't know why that word prototype wouldn't come to me, but there it is. Okay, so, and I would say the same thing. The blade to handle ratio is not great. Uh, moving on to the handle, the big complaint has been the pocket clip. Uh, mine as well, you can hear it's not touching the frame. Um, I will probably take this off and bend it down a little bit to tighten it up because the retention is not awesome. Uh, so we'll see whether or not that works. Um, if it works and everything's great, then when I do the full review, I'll just say, hey, it worked really well, and we can move on from there. And hopefully that will be the case. So uh, let's go ahead and give you a size and weight on this. I know there's other things that have been brought up by people, and if you wanna rehash that in the comments here, feel free to do so. Let me move on to size and weight on this guy. So what we have here for overall size is going to be seven and five eighths inches. Blade length is seven, is three and three sixteenths. You guys know that's a little bit of a short blade for me, but there are other things that stand out to me about this knife. So uh, finally, the handle length is four and a half inches. So that's the size. Oh yeah, a couple more quick measurements here. So about seven sixteenths thick, just under half an inch. And let's see here. Basically three and a half inches of grip area, okay? Let's grab a weight. Now, this is a knife, I've heard a couple people say already that it's basically as advertised, uh, and they say it's 4.3 ounces, so we'll see if it's 4.3 ounces here in a second. Yeah, and basically 4.3 ounces. I guess you could round up to 4.4, but close enough for me. Okay. So what's my first impression on this knife and what is my take on the discussion that's going on surrounding this knife? My first impression is this is a hefty, tough little EDC knife. And as that 
you know, in that role, I think it's pretty well done. All right. The discussion that around, you know, some of the imperfections of this knife and some of the disappointment, I think that's primarily because of the situation. Okay, this was a knife that was long in coming. So people who ordered this were really chomping at the bit and part of that energy, you know, becomes excitement and, you know, building this thing up in your mind to where it's some kind of, you know, the greatest knife that's ever been made or something like that. And that's a little above the expectation that you should have for this knife. It's a $110 production knife that's, you know, uh, you know, using some interesting, offering some interesting stuff. I really like the Nitro V steel. I like the axis lock. I love the fact that the axis lock, and it's a, it's a Griptilian style knife, uh, but does a lot of things better than a Griptilian, okay? So, if you were expecting, you know, a, a Benchmade Griptilian with, you know, slightly better fit and finish and, you know, a little tougher, a little more toughness and with that interesting steel, then I don't think you were disappointed, okay? If you were expecting, you know, a mid-tech quality knife for $110, then yeah, you probably were a little let down when this knife came. Of course, the exception to my whole explanation being if yours really, really had problems, you know, if the if the centering, whoops, as I try to cut into my table, if the centering was really, really bad and it was rubbing, if the action was horrible and you couldn't get the knife to deploy, if the lock, you know, one of the Omega springs broke or something, or if the pocket clip was so loose that you couldn't get it in your pocket, those are all real problems. And I totally understand people taking an issue with that. All right. But I do think to a certain extent, some of the disappointment around this is, is just overblown expectations. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to hear your comments below. Have you got one of these? What do you think of it? Do you plan to buy one? And what do you think is going to happen with this? Now, I suspect, okay, and then from, from mass drop, there seems to be the indication that this is not going to be a one and done type of drop. Uh, but I, and so I suspect you will be able to get this in different finishes and different color G10. And, and you know, I don't know about different blade shapes. This blade, I, you know, I don't know what the, the handle can accommodate, but... I could see this being, you know, fairly widely used by Mass Drop um, if it's popular. So I guess that's the big question to see if this knife sells as many as they hope it does, then we'll probably see other variations of this. And if you like this knife and you really like what it's doing, if you, you know, if you kind of agree with me that, you know, it's a great, it's great to have a moderately sized sort of heavy duty folder with an access lock. If, if your thinking is similar to mine, then I think you'll really, really like this. There you go, guys. That's my overall take on the knife. I will do a full review, even though this video is full review length. Uh, obviously, I can't really speak to long-term use and hotspots and all that kind of stuff. So we'll come back and rehash a whole bunch of this stuff. Plus, that'll give me a chance to talk about some of the things that you bring up in the comments. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.